whether it is Dollar Tree wood pieces or my own stash of scrap wood, I love working with them to make durable crafts that I can either keep or sell. I'm going to start with these wood planks from Dollar Tree and I got six of them. I'm going to remove the sticker from the back and then we're going to join them together to create a piece of board. I'm going to stack them up three and three and then I'm just going to start joining them each to each other with hot glue. Very little hot glue because I don't want it to get clumpy. But I'm going to join them one by one and then each plank together. To give it a more secure look, I am going to flip it over and I am going to use some paint sticks as well as staples to create a very secure bond. And now that everything's put together, we are going to give it two coats of Waverly Chalking in the white, but you can do any color you want. I am going to add a stencil to the front of this board and it's a stencil from Essential Stencil. I do have their website down below in the description box, but if you have stencils at home that you can use, or even if you have a Cricut, you can certainly do whatever design you want for it. I am going to sand it down just a bit, wipe it and dust it really well. It's just going to smooth it out and just distress ever so lightly those edges. Here's a stencil. It's a beautiful Highland cow and I think it's so gorgeous. It can be very patriotic themed or farmhouse themed. I'm going to go with the farmhouse theme. The stencil came with uh, two options. I'm going to take some black paint. This is Waverly and I'm going to remove a lot of the excess paint from the stenciling brush. And I'm going to work that paint right inside the brush and then very lightly go in a circular motion. This is going to give me a very clean stencil without any bleed through. Many of you have always asked me, how do you get no bleed through? This is it, my friends. Very, very little paint. Remove the excess. Work that paint inside of the brush. And then ever so lightly start stenciling in a circular motion. Don't press down hard. Look how beautiful this turned out. I love it. Here's the second part. I'm just going to do the sunflower portion, tape it down, and I'm going to use some yellow, some antiquing wax, and some green paint. Now I am going to reveal and look how cute this looks. I'm a little bit obsessed. <laughs> I'm going to take some more of that antiquing wax and I'm just going to start antiquing and distressing those edges just for a little bit more of a farmhouse look. This is completely optional. You don't need to. Once I apply it, I am going to wipe off any excess uh, wax and then I'm also going to be uh, sanding it. That way it's going to really muffle it and just be it a detail rather than uh, just a strong distress. So look how cute this looks. It's definitely one of my favorites. I think it's why I put it first. But it's so inexpensive and you can reuse this stencil over and over again. For this next DIY craft, I'm going to go in my stash of wood. My garage is a hot mess, but we do have this stash of woods that uh, we use from different projects. And recently we redid our bathroom and I just had these pieces. I honestly found them these sizes. I did not have to cut them, but if you have anything at home, you can just cut them in a staggered size, one larger than the other. We're also going to be using these wood stars from Dollar Tree. And they have these dowels. I found this drill bit that kind of looks like the same size. We'll see if it's going to work. Otherwise, I have this spade blade that I can use, but it's a little too big, so I'm hoping the drill bit works. I'm going to put my safety glove on, and then we're going to just start uh, drilling a hole right on top. I marked where the center was, and then I'm going to see if it fits, and it actually fits a little snug, but it worked. So I'm going to drill the other two holes. I'm going to start to sand down the pieces. Now this is just to smooth them out, remove any grime, and just get them prepped for some paint. I want to give this a stained look with a patriotic theme to it, but you can use any color you want if you're going to use them for any other project. I am going to start with this Coastal Blue by Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. I watered it down because I only had a tiny little bit at the bottom 
of the container. So I watered it down, applied it, and removed the excess. And I did the same thing on all sides of the piece. And then I also did that with the red paint as well as the white paint. As always, my friends, I would love to connect with you on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And I have those links down below in the description box. So make sure you check them out when you're done watching. So while those pieces dry, I'm going to start working on my stars. So I'm going to remove the sticker from them. And I'm going to give them each one coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. And I'm going to do the front, the back, as well as the sides. And a little bit of the dowel, about maybe three inches from the top. Once dry, I'm going to mark two inches from the top because we are going to cut them. I'm going to use my miter shears. I do get these on Amazon, my friends. This is a great buy. If you're looking for something that you can cut dowels with, it has different angles you can cut them at. And it has a little lock where you can just then store it. Really cool. And it is in my Amazon store. So make sure you check it out when you're done watching. The link is in the description box. All right, so I add a little bit of wood glue inside that hole, and then I'm going to place each star on top of each piece. We are making a patriotic decor, and it kind of looks like little firecrackers, but it could just be anything. <laughs> so now I'm going to attach all pieces, and I'm going to use my brad nailer. Now, I don't use this often, but I am going to use my two-inch nails and some wood glue to attach them. These are very thick pieces, so I want to make sure that brad nail goes right through them. I'm going to add three nails in each side. And let me tell you, this is a very sturdy piece. I love creating pieces like this because I can either keep for myself and look really high end or even sell them for a really high profit. This scarf is from Dollar Tree. I've used these scarves this summer a lot and I love working with them. That one has a patriotic thing. I just tied it around, made a very loose bow and look how cute this looks. It's already in my decor in my living room and I'm loving it. For this next DIY craft, we're going to take these two pieces of scrap, two by four. They're this size right now, but we're going to cut them. We are going to cut them in angles though, because I want to create a barn, kind of like a farmhouse barn. So two smaller pieces are going to be cut in an angle. And then the remaining piece, I'm going to cut in a kind of like a V shape, just like that. I'm going to use my miter saw to cut them. And this is what it looks like when you put them together. I'm going to sand them down just to remove any of the splinters and just smooth out the pieces. These are truly scrap pieces and they were rough. I'm going to give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Bin in the linen white. And then the top of them, like the roof portion, I'm going to do it in black. And this is the Waverly Ink Paint. Friends, if you have not joined my email list, I would love for you to consider doing so. I send out one email a week with updates on uploads for the week, as well as any new news from my channel and business. So if you want to join it, the link is down in the description box. All right, so now I'm going to place all the pieces together. And then I'm going to take this box. This just so happens to be a box that kind of fits the size that I needed. And I'm just going to start using it as a guide and hand paint what will look like a barn door. Now you can use a ruler, you can use whatever you want. This is just what I had on hand. And I do want it to have that hand drawn or hand painted style. Then I'm gonna use my ruler and make a crisscross line on the barn door. And then I'm gonna hand draw or hand paint a window on the top. This is just gonna bring everything together. Now these pieces are not gonna join together, but I think they look great. I, this little barn is so stinking cute. Again, something I can use year round in my decor or even sell it for a profit. For the next DIY craft, I'm gonna take this wood paneling that I had in my scrap pile. It's dusty, it's splintery, but we're gonna cut it in three pieces and angle cut the edges because we're gonna make some tags. I'm going to secure them onto my table with a clamp and then use a spade blade to cut the hole to make them really look like tags. Now those angle edges I cut with my matter saw as well as the tags themselves and I think it worked really well. I'm just going to start sanding them, smoothing them down and adding Mod Podge to the first one. We're going to use the striped black and white fabric. We're going to make sure that it's attached really well. For the second one, we are going to use a black and white fabric different style but it really complements that first one and then for the third one we're just going to cover it in some faux leather this leather is actually from amazon but you can find them at dollar tree as well so i'm just going to start applying them again with mod podge and cutting off the excess fabric from the edges
of course, I want to make sure that I remove the excess fabric from the hole. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife and my scissors to do so. I created a couple graphics for them. This one has a little chicken and the chick, and I'm going to place it on the bottom. And then for the other one, I created a little cow for a little farmhouse look, and I'm going to place it on the bottom. For the black one, I created a decal that says Farm Sweet Farm, and I'm just going to add it right there in the center. So the next thing I want to do is I want to tie these together and create like they're hanging tags. So I'm going to add some nautical rope from Dollar Tree to two of them and tie them in a knot right on the top. Then I'm going to stack them together in a way that kind of looks like it flows. And then I'm going to add a full uh, rope, I suppose, for the third one because it's behind it. So if I added a knot, it's just going to be too bulky. So I'm just going to attach them to each other using some staples. And then I am going to just add a full rope to the third one just by attaching it in the back. Once I have it attached, I'm just going to pull them all together towards the top. This is just going to make it look like it's just, they're just all hanging around together. And I am going to tie them with some jute string to the top. I'm going to cut off and even out the nautical rope from the top. And then I'm going to use this little garland. It's a wired garland from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to make two small little bows. And then I'm just going to hot glue them right where that juice string is. That way it's just going to add a nice detail. And I think this one is adorable. You can make this in any theme. If you're not into farmhouse, you can make them for Christmas, for fall, for spring, anything you want. But I would love to know which one is your favorite. Let me know down in the comments. And I have another video here for you to watch. Make sure you click on it. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.